the Chiang Lai fish ball cart over on Canal Street. Cao Lê Yu Tan. Okay. Hou Yao Yu Tan. Show us. Okay, show us what you got. He opened his own spot now. Espresso martini <laughs> via style. I feel that burn afterwards. Man, that's pretty good, guys. Pure rice rolls, probably top three in Chinatown. It's pretty good. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. And we are gonna be cooking the Cha Ki House Special Seafood Fried Rice, but with the added smala. you guys leading off this brand new episode of Chinatown Cheap Eats straight on Doyer Street. We have Mabu Hong Kong Cafe. Brian, you're from Hong Kong. What does that say? It says Ma Bo Bing Sut and Ma Bo means linen and Bing Sut is just the old school way to call Cha Chan Tang. Oh. Hey guys, I heard they have a ton of Hong Kong memorabilia. It's actually a chain from Toronto. Let's check it out. All right, you guys, uh, Brian, are we in Wong Kok right now or where are we? We're probably in Wong Kok or Wan Chai right now. Okay. All right, the thing that immediately stands out to me is this old Hong Kong style pork cracklings over rice. What is this called in Chinese? It's called Ju Ya Lo Fan, essentially. So you're mixing lard with rice and we, with some soy sauce on top. Fucking delicious. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I've never had it before, so today's gonna be my first time. Uh, Brian, here at uh, Mabu, they do do some innovative stuff, right? Yeah, so if you look at this, Satay beef, like satay beef noodle is my go-to breakfast, but now they're combining that with ball of So is that something you can't even find in Hong Kong right now? Is this even more of a- Not Toronto that I can food? recall, not that I can recall. And so. not only that, look, they got the strawberry milky cream French toast sai mm. That's I feel like that's me yeah, too. Yeah, I respect I that. Real quick, I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Smala. It's actually also our own chili oil we've been working on, guys. We're super excited about it. It took us like 14 months. It's super high quality, very flavorful. It has real truffle in it, but it also has the mala numbing spice. It's just great. It goes good on everything. For more information, you can check it out on smalasauce.com. You can also pre-order yours today. Pre-orders are ending soon, so please do so. Thank you so much. you guys here we got round one at Mabu Hong Kong Cafe this is called what Ju Yao Lo Fan Ju Yao Lo Fan you guys this is fried lard over rice my god and of course over here we've got coconut durian uh hot pot with gong tai mean gong tai mean is this uh actual instant ramen here at the bottom this is coconut milk there's sago there's red bean paste and some grass jelly. Oh wow, look at the bear. The bear, it won the bath. The bath is like the condensed milk. So cute. Hold that ya. Fried lard over rice. Ju yao lo fan. Now Brian, this is a little bit more of a heritage Hong Kong cafe dish, right? Like it's a little bit more for the older generation, 60, 70, 80 years old. Yeah, you don't see that a lot nowadays in Hong Kong, but my dad used to eat this growing up. This is a coconut chicken durian hot pot right here now guys i've never had this before i know that coconut chicken is a very trending flavor in the guangdong region whoa whoa it's durian coconut chicken soup she said there's a surprise inside in this uh strawberry side wow. Wow. wow yeah very surprised um very surprised you guys, $9 for the condensed milk ice bear. Ah, uh, chopped his nose off with the hong dao and the uh, other things going on with the mangoes and the, the mochi. Uh. Not good. It's two dishes for $16 and $12 respectively. Brian, what are we looking at? This is hak chong lo ji si gok fan, which is black truffle cheesy pasta with chicken. Wow, guys, I know, uh, as you guys know, Hong Kong food doesn't always have 
a lot of Chinese flavorings to it, but the combination is very Chinese, very Asian. All right, here we have a bolo pao uh, sandwich. We have spam, we got uh, pork cutlet here. An apple bun sandwich, $11.99. And the bolo pao is very, very sweet. Maybe I wish the bun was a little bit softer, less crumbly, but overall, man, if I put a little hot sauce, if we had a little sriracha maybe, I know some people come to Hong Kong cafes and might look at the baked uh, macaroni cheese pastas as kind of like something kitty or too Americanized, but let me tell you this, the whole combination and the fact that you're eating it here is very HK. Yo, this is good. And we're looking at two sandwiches, but this one's for dessert and this one's not. What are we looking at here? This is Jiu Tong Lai Wang Bao, which translates to caramel custard bun. This one's actually really good. I would say this is a 4.5 out of five on the nice and creamy scale. This is a satay beef and egg bolo sandwich. No, it's only nine. Nine dollars, oh my oh, gosh. Shit. So This is a steal. This is a Chinatown cheap eat right here. Nine dollars for that. It feels like having the whole bowl of satay noodles all mixed up in your mouth in one bite. I like that over the other sandwich we had. That's got flavor. Get that one, nine dollars. Ending off our very funky and kind of new school meal here at Mabu, we have the Po Tzup Gai Mien Bao Wun, okay, AKA Po Tzup Gai Bread Bowl. Bread bowl. <laughs> po Tzup Gai is uh, creamy sauce with chicken. Oh. Po Tzup Gai Mien Bao Wun is $20. Hey, they do not got this at Fairwood and Maxim. They are doing things differently, but let's see if the taste lives up. Very carby. I would have liked I would have liked a little bit more like baking on top, but yeah. overall, that's pretty solid, guys. Yeah. All right, HK Brian, we're wrapping up our meal here at Mabu. This is for Chinatown Cheap Eats. I would say price-wise, um, it's not the cheapest of cheap, but it's really not that expensive. I mean, the top dishes are $20, so that's pretty fair, but you can get a lot of great dishes for $9 here, so definitely check it out. There's still some cheap eat items here. Brian, what did you notice about this being from Hong Kong? I see a lot of familiar dishes, but I also see a lot of like creative dishes and I respect that a lot. You know, a chain from Toronto. So, you know, from Toronto, I don't know. They're pretty like chill out in Canada. That's bro. true. That's Canada, true. bro. They're chill. And this spot's chill, bro. Saga Man's out. Peace. Guys, our old friend who was running the Chiang Lai fishball cart over on Canal Street, and we did a video with him a long time ago. That's the come up. That's the he come opened his own spot now. Is that Kale Yudan? Kale Yudan. Kale Yudan. Yudan. Okay. Okay. Yo Yudan. Show us. Show us. Okay. Show us what you got. Show us what you got. Hey. Congrats. Congratulations. He went from the cart to the brick and mortar. He's he, over he, said he, said, he said it was a lot more fuk top. Fuk top means a lot more complicated. <laughs> yes, of yeah, course, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. But but he's he's made it, so you know we're gonna come here to support. Let you guys know this is very much a Chinatown Yo, yo Sunday, yeah, am I? Let's see if the guy is the same. Nah. Oh, you want the chicken wings? Chicken wings, yeah, 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 chicken wings, yeah, 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 chicken wings. You got chicken wings now, see? Yeah. He didn't have chicken wings off the cart. <laughs> yeah, the okay. cart. Yeah. All right, you guys, we're at the brand new brick and mortar location of Chiang Lai Fish Balls. Like we said, they used to be a stall on Grand Street, Andrew. This the come up. Yeah, man, brick and mortar guys come out and support. So they specialize in fish balls, rice rolls. This is a dish that you would get off the cart. They have some new dishes here. Obviously chicken wings and the fried manto. They, they didn't have that off the cart. But let me go try in this. Guys, definitely a Chinatown cheapy. Just look at the menu. Mmm. Mm. Everything's Hong Kong style though. Oh, no. Fish ball still good. Mmm. This is a fried mantau, aka manto. Uh, a lot of Chinese people like to eat it with condensed milk. Man, honestly, I might eat the rest of this. These fish balls, because they're a little bit fried on the outside and they actually have a little bit of the curry flavoring. Why don't you wash that down, my brother? Oh, with a nice hot lai cha. Dong ling cha. Oh, that's hot. This is the dish that helped them get the store. 
Still banging. Yo, what I will say this though, look at this chicken wing. Look how, do you see the width of it? I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty thick. <laughs> and it's freshly fried. That wing is a munch. Mmm. All right, man. My man said we gotta put the lachio churn, high churn bean. Okay, this is the fresh tripe. Tripe, man. Fresh tripe. I'm going with the, the rutabaga. I like the big tripe. For me, I like tripe that's either the one you get in pho, the tiny one, or the big honeycomb one. All right. Man, we eat, man, we eating like some 95 year old. These fresh fish balls, I could tell because they're not perfectly in ball form and I like that. It shows that it's organic. It's not like made out of a machine, you know? Mm. Oh. You guys, if you ever been to the Chiang Lai fish ball cart, come to the brick and mortar. It's even better. All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is A1 Seafood here at the corner of Christie and Grand Street. Prime location, lots of stuff going on right here. But I got the lunch special here, of course. But they have a lot of other great dishes here. But uh, I'm gonna focus on these dishes, which are only $10. They also have lunch specials for $13. Here, I got the fish filet with bean curd. Lots of ginger flavor. This is actually very, very delicious. You get rice, you get the soup. Bam, check that out. Let me just a little sip. Ooh, look at all the veggies. Mmm. Now you got scrambled egg with baby shrimp. Now, what I think is really cool is for a long time in Chinatown, there was the Fujinese and the Cantonese. Cantonese were probably there first, Fujinese came in, and there was always some, I, I, I guess historically there was some separation, of course, right? But now, there's like collaboration businesses. This one has FJ owners and Cantonese chefs. So, hey, it's a new age, everybody. Everybody's together. Oh my gosh, look at the drippy bean curd with the garlic. I mean, and the ginger, it's crazy. Mm. Oh, shrimp with scrambled egg is one of my favorite. Look at this uh, chili oil here that they have. I like, it's, it's minced up, a little bit different than the other ones. Guys, overall, this food is pretty good. There's always Chinatown cheap eats, no matter how expensive or gentrified you think things are getting. They're always bringing the deals, man. Chinatown lives on, let's go. Food's so good, it's making my hair stand up. Mmm. Soft, fluffy eggs. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we're at the iconic Empanada Mama. I saw Frank Ocean here one time. This is a ham and cheese empanada, definitely not fully traditional. We're gonna hit it with the small lot. It's about $4.60 plus tax. Ooh, they make them fresh. This is definitely a Chinatown adjacent late night chip eat. All right, you guys, today we are at Cha Ki, one of the dopest Cha Tan Tangs in Chinatown, NYC. And we are going to be cooking the Cha Ki house special seafood fried rice, but with the added smala. All right, guys, so we know that smala makes an incredible finishing oil, but we wanted to cook with it too. We wanted to show you guys that the usage could be the exact same usage as olive oil. So we had seafood cook up a Cha Ki fried rice with a ton of smala in there. Of course, the wok, hey, you know, the wok was burning hot, so let's check it out. It got just enough pick, guys. I'm telling you guys, especially if you're Cantonese or you didn't grow up eating mala flavors, this is the perfect amount. I'm telling you guys, it works both ways. As a finishing oil on top of something without mala flavor, but it actually works cooked into the um, dish as well, infused into it. It really draws certain elements out differently because it reacts to the heat. So I love it. Smala, you get two bottles and you get optionality. Cook with it, but just throw it on top at the end. Mmm, that's good. All right, everybody, what you're looking at is smala being cooked inside of the house special fried rice here. It has pickled veggies with a little bit of sweetness and the Chinese bacon, the lap yolk. But I'll tell you this, you can barely tell by the shade. The shade's a little bit darker, but man, there is definitely an extra kick in this fried rice. Mmm. I still taste the truffle, but I think even some of the granules that sit at the bottom of your smala bottle, they came out and got recooked just real quickly, tossing that hot wok for like a second, and it just brought out a little bit more flavor. But man, let me just add a little bit more drop. Mmm. All right, you guys, we are at the iconic Great NY Noodle Town. Of course, opened up the interior back uh, for dining post-COVID. Um, I only have $20, so of course, I had to get their signature dish, which is the Gong uh, Chong Wantan Mien. But uh, obviously, it's just the egg noodle, but with 
on top, which is the duck. As you can see here, guys, this is what Great NY Noodle Town is known for. I mean, pretty much since 1995, this has been the premier late night spot in Chinatown. Look at the mountains of ginger scallion, aka Gurm Chung on top. Wait, bro, bro, bro. Oh my goodness, I was doing Come it like on. it was spaghetti. I mean, this is a very iconic dish. Not everybody serves just Deng Chong Dan Mian like this. Like we said, we only had $20, guys. $9 for the Gurung Chong Ginger Scallion Noodles, $5 for the duck add-on, $14 all in. And of course, we have to garnish it with a little bit of our brand new sauce, Sma La. Come get Smala at the link below, guys. From Sichuan to Sicily, I think this uh, is gonna go perfect on this Gurung Chong Wen Tan Min. The Smala added just enough kick. It is unlike anything else on the market. Check it out, the link below. I'm telling you guys, super affordable, super iconic, right? And my noodle town, legendary. All right, you guys, we are at the brand new location of Soft Swerve. Their first location was on 91 Allen. Now they're here on Bayard Street, which is an iconic street in Chinatown. As you can see, they've got this like retro Hong Kong, Chinatown, Americana vibe going on here. And, and you know, the space is not very big, but they did a very good job of making it feel big, almost like a mini museum. As you can see, I'm getting toppings put on my Hong Kong Lai Ta milk tea matcha swirl right now. Golly, I'm telling you, if you have not been to Soft Swerve, this is the best Asian Soft Swerve in America. If you guys have never had Asian flavored Soft Serve, you're definitely missing out because this is a Hong Kong milk tea flavor. I got the toffee, I got the mochi, I got the cookie crumbles, I got the matcha swirl. Ooh. I mean, they got lychee strawberry regular ice cream as well. But for me, a couple pieces of mochi, some sprinkles, that's me. That's me in a cup. Is soft serve the best soft serve? Yes or no? Yes. All right, guys, we are really outside of Na Trong on Baxter. And we got our man here. He has hooked it up and is showing us some very, very new items. Some items that you, they're off the menu. These are off the yeah, menu. Off okay. menu. Can you talk about what we got? This is the special noodle with uh, great love classic. Uh, Vietnamese pho uh, for special noodle. We got red beef, we got tendon, and special we add the uh, barbecue pork chop. Pho. It's a pork chop pho, okay, and then right here? This is one of, the, one of my favorite. It's a calamari added with a shrimp, mixed together with scallop and onion on top of uh, green lettuce. That mm, is, yo, that smells delicious, man. It's been last for 30 years. And this is another one is, uh, we had a, uh, we, we sell a lot of grilled pork sandwich, and we add a top of the fried egg, and we add tofu in there. Yeah, guys, so this a lot is like- of mayonnaise. You like mayonnaise, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he knows I like mayo, all right. Guys, they have a soju Vietnamese coffee is about to show me, so I love <laughs> Na Trang because it's a traditional Vietnamese spot over in Chinatown, but they he, he he's always down to mix it up and yeah, try something yeah, new, all right, so. Something good. Let's get okay. into it. Bun me, you got scallion oil, tofu, grilled pork, two fried eggs, lots of mayo on top. Guys, this is a special bun me off the menu. Let me just break those yolks so it's dripping now. Watch. Man, shout out to Chinatown Cheap Eats. There's a lot going on, but I like it. This is the owner's favorite dish. This is calamari with shrimp, so it's a mixed plate. So it's not, it's like a sea, fried seafood with like the Chinese like tiu, tiu yim, which is like salt and pepper, but also with a kind of like Southeast Asian uh, flair to it, you know, with like a little bit more pungent sweetness. This dish is a must get. Lots of flavor. <laughs> all right, guys, here we have the special pho, lots of tendon. I put all my greens in there. Of course, you have your beef flank, your everything like that, except you also got your pork chop flowing in here. So let me see how it all goes together. This is pork grilled pork chop pho. Mm, nice char flavor on the outside. Last but not least, again, doing things differently, we have a shrimp dog. This is ground up shrimp paste wrapped up in taro uh, shreddings and then fried. So, hey, put something in the shape of a corn dog. 
and it might just sell. Whoa. Oh, is man, a soju there's, like, there's like watching Kung Lei make you a drink, man. Is, is you can that, have a single like side. Let's try single side first. They'll be together here, right? Single side here, right inside here. Look at that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Espresso martini <laughs> via style. That's pretty good. I could probably put another shot of soju in there, but actually I feel that burn afterwards. But man, that's pretty good, guys. Come here, try it out. Maybe ask them, see if you can get it. But I just love what Natron's doing. Chinatown cheapies, love to see Chinatown spots, always innovating, and doing something new. All right, everybody, we are here at Sugar Cane Daddy over on Baxter, right next to Na Trong. It is the number one place to get your sugar cane drinks in New York City. Yo, Winsley, tell us about this new flavor that you got. So for the summer, we're gonna do a passion fruit. Everyone's been asking about it, and we, and we, gotta, you know, we gotta send this out. This is this is the new drink for the summer. Okay, so. and now you're testing this, the ratios this is the, right this now. This is the ratio right now. I hope, it, I hope it's good enough. I hope it's not too sweet, not too sour, but let's see what's up. I think the passion fruit's coming through, bro. I mean, it's working. I, I, I think, think this works. is the, the this is the golden ratio. You might have it because mm -mm. I, I taste the passion fruit. I taste the sugar cane. I like yep. it because there's a little bit of sourness from the passion fruit that's balancing out with the sweetness of the sugar cane. Yep. Yo, cheers, bro. And you already know everything. You already know everything's all natural. All natural sugar. These are all our sugar canes right here. This right here, one one stick right here makes one drink. We are at White Dream Cafe, Rice Roll Kings. They got so many different names. What you are witnessing right now is a master at work. A master of the rice roll, the chung fun in Mandarin, the chung fun. I'm about to get the fish. Yeah, he's making a rice roll right now. We got everything in it. I got a fish base, I added scallions, and I added shrimp. Andrew, I figured it out. They put a chung fun spot called West Rice Roll and White Dream Cafe, a boba shop, in the same spot. Ooh, I like the multi-use. All right, so here we have a fresh made churn fun. This is at a baseline $5, but you had add-ons that made it $8. Still very much a Chinatown cheapie. What do we got here? And fish guess and what? Shrimp? Guess what? It's fish. Oh my gosh, That's, fish and this shrimp. This is my very first fish churn fun look, I ever had. Look how life. translucent the churn fun is. Do you see that? Do you see how thin it is, guys? That's churn fun. Oh my God, you know it's fresh. It was, it's not day old, it's re-steamed. This is fresh, fresh, fresh to death. Let's go. I'm super silk, super silk, I'm super silky. Oh my God. Listen guys, churn fun for the longest time it was $1, $2, $3, but it's getting the up market. Joel's rice rolls, West rice rolls. We're moving, we're moving up market, folks. Honestly, I would say for pure rice rolls, Probably top three in Chinatown. It's pretty good. All right, next up on Cheap Chinatown Eats, man. We're back in the Mott Street Eatery. They have a new stall called Build Noodle. Of course, I still want to give a shout out to Guy Kitchen. They are serving chicken and rice for under $10, which is ridiculous. But back over here, uh, we got June here. He is from Japan and he just started Build Noodle. You can build your own udon. You said, June, you said yes. you have the, your very own special udon right. noodle maker. Exactly. And you said it's a rare machine to have. Exactly. Only okay. one in the United States. So this udon is like top, top level. Top level. How right many? here at Mott Fresh. Street Eatery, guys. Kakiage for $6. Crazy deal. Yeah. Okay, June, yeah. this is the very special udon making machine. Right. How does it work? Okay, this machine contains everything. Mixing, uh, making pressure, uh -huh. and uh, make the dough flat. Oh. And cut. Cut. Yeah, because udon comes out like in a thick sheet, right? Exactly. And then it gets cut into the square noodles type exactly. thing. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, here at Mont Street Eatery, you can now get this kakiage, uh, vegetable kind of tempura ball over udon for only $6. That's a crazy deal. And then here I have the curry beef udon. Ooh. One hundred percent worth six dollars, and I just feel like it's really cool to see an authentic Japanese concept open up here. As well as you have Taiwanese guote, you have a now Singaporean chicken rice, you have Thai chicken rice, you have Kanto food, you got more Kanto snacks, you got um, sushi there. So, man, shout out to them. Curry udon, thirteen dollars. Mod Street Eatery, always doing new things. 
$7 Singaporean Hainan chicken rice, guys. Yellow skin, yellow rice. It looks like there's a lot of flavor. I like the gurung chong right here with the ginger scallion. Ooh, I'm excited to try. $7 is a steal. Come by right now and get it. Mm. Right off the bat, it is really good, but it probably reminds me more of kind of like a guai fei gai. It's like a dish that you get a lot of Cantonese restaurants that are yellow skin. The chicken comes out and you, like I would say it's more like that than it is Hainan chicken, but either way, it is a crazy steal right now. $7 is ridiculous. So come while it's still cheap. What's up on Chinatown Cheap Eats? We are actually a little bit outside of Chinatown. We're here on Rivington at Morgan Stern's new concept bananas. They rebranded, they're doing something different and they have Asian flavors here, guys. Look at, they even just got Sanzo too. That's the most Asian sparkling seltzer but here for ten dollars you can actually get a swirl this is the matcha and yuzu and then here we have mango tapioca and then sprinkles right there so guys they're definitely doing asian things here i'm excited to try it they said this mango tapioca topping is the best selling topping so this is all ten dollars ten dollars is a lot but it's actually pretty hefty too oh wow oh whoa 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 all right, right off the bat, I gotta say, it is pretty refreshing, pretty delicious. It kind of reminds me of the Dole Whip over in uh, Disneyland, for example, that's also very famous, but it is all dairy-free. They got more concepts and more locations opening up. Well, I would definitely recommend the tapioca mango topping. I've never had this before. It's like mango clusters of tapioca. It's pretty delicious. I would say the matcha flavor, not super strong, but it fits well. It's not too bitter. I like it. What's going on everybody? I'm outside of Golden Mana Bakery. They actually have some new bakery items. I love to see the Chinese bakeries always evolve and add new items. So here we have this Swiss roll cake, but it's a little bit different. As you can see, it has strawberry cake, chocolate bits, and a whole big pieces of nuts in there. Um, so this was $2, let me try it out. I would say that the roll cakes always could have used more of an update and more things in it. It's not bad. All right, everybody, I'm here at Audrey Bakery over on Bowery. It's one of my favorite bakeries in Chinatown. Here they have some new items. They got this American cheesecake I'm gonna get, and they got this yogurt fruit cup that I'm gonna get. Uh, these are all premium items. They cost about $4 and $5.25, and since I already have this in my hand and I can't put it down, this is the sausage egg bun. Uh, this is for $3, so I'm gonna buy them all. Guys, this is a mango yogurt cup with fresh mango on it here at Mana. Mmm. It's good. It's good. It's very good. Get the mango yogurt cup here at Audrey Bakery. Get it. All right, you guys, we're on Baxter Street. We're at the Pie Guys. Like we said here, you got chicken bacon ranch. This is not a traditional New York Italian pizza flavor, but I want to say for, you know, nowadays in 2023, it almost is like a new classic because you can find it at a lot of spots. Usually not Italian owned though. Yeah, my man who made this from Toluca, Mexico right here. That's why we got the Valentinas, the Cholula, and of course for the more American hype beast crowd, the Mike's Hot Honey. 350 for a whole slice, I split it into two, gigantic. Next up on Cheap Chinatown Eats. I know we're not really in Chinatown, but we're in Chinatown Extended. Kanji Village is right across the street. We're here at Williamsburg Pizza over on Allen Street. It's open late night. This is one of the first good pizza spots I went to when I visited New York City. And here we have the Tartufu slice. Tartufo slice, sorry. It's the fungi, you know, got the mushrooms. And then you have your pepperoni grandma slice here. And of course, a smala drizzle. So click the link down below if you guys are interested in smala right now but let me check uh the tartufo slice with the smala mm. so use a little more Bam. Mm. <laughs> williamsburg pizza is known to be very crispy on the bottom and they kind of have some cool like recipes they have like an apple bacon one i didn't get but both these slices are 475 each Low extra small la. Got the AC blowing my sheets away. Mmm. You know, Warner Williams Burger is still busy to this day. Pizza's crispy, saucy, flavorful. What more can you say? And it's still pretty cheap.